Recording. Welcome, everybody, to the Monthly Movie Dispatch, the movie review show from friends that you can trust. Every week, we broadcast a review of a new film, talk about some film news or other related topics, and recommend what to watch. We've been talking, critiquing, and gushing over movies for years, ever since I can remember. And we aim to bring you honest conversations about relevant cinema. I'm Nick Moffat, and I'm here in Everett, Washington, with my good buddy, Sean Bowlby. Hi. And yeah, we're here today. We're going to be reviewing the movie St. Maud. It's the new A24 movie. Um, directed by Rose Glass. So, um, yeah, this movie went through a lot of delays. Um, if you go on Letterboxd, it says it came out in 2019, I think. But uh, really, it truly, I promise, didn't get released until 2021. So, yes, it counts as a new movie. But we will get to that. Um, I kind of, you know, as an opening topic, there isn't too much going on in the film world. Um, I, I thought it'd be fun and worthwhile to talk about some of our favorite uh, horror movies directed by women. Um, I have a I have a list here from Letterboxd uh, that is uh, called the Horror Directed by Women, but there's another one that I found that's Fully not named. called. Yeah, I know it's perfectly named. A bit on the nose for me. That's but... called uh, Women Make Movies with a Softer Touch, and it's in quotes, and it's all these like brutal movies and. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so, Sean, I mean, uh, I, I know uh, we kind of talked about this before the pod started, and you didn't really have any off the top of your head, so I'm yeah. just going to throw a few at you, All some right. of my favorites. Yeah. Um, I love horror movies, and I'm, you know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of championing, like, women directing movies right now, you know, I'm, I'm just, I want, I want more and more female voices, mm-hmm. I want women to- You're for have, the cause. Yeah, dude, uh, Right now, I don't know if I told you, but I'm I'm actually working through my one of my projects, one of my movie projects of the year is to watch 52 movies directed by women. Mm. So I'm just trying, trying to like keep that on the forefront of the movies that I'm picking through cool. the year. Well, one checked off for this. Yeah, no, this was this actually one. number 25 oh, wow. checked off. So I'm I'm almost halfway there, and it's wow. not even close to June yet. Yeah. So, um, anyway, I just want to throw a few of these at you. Um, raw. I did Have not see Raw? Raw. No, that oh, man, one's Raw definitely on my list. I uh, I missed it that year. Yeah, I think it came out in 2016 or 2017. Yeah, it was a French movie. Um, that was like a coming of age movie about cannibalism. So uh, very creative. Yeah, it was on like all three of your lists that year or something. Yeah, or, yeah, I remember that. A couple because, lists because um, because. I think Brandon watched it first and he was a big fan, but then me and Derek ended up putting it higher and he yeah. was very surprised. Uh, uh-huh. He thought he liked it the most uh-huh. and we showed him. Yeah. Um, Tigers are not afraid. Have you heard of that one? I've, I haven't heard that one. I haven't heard of that one. Oh, this one's really good. Um, I think I mentioned on the pod when it came out, I watched it for horror movie month back, back that year. I think it was 2017, maybe it was 2018, but it's like it takes place in mexico and it's like about um like cartel land type stuff but Mm. also there's like monsters and it's like a fairy tale kind of um but whether or not the monsters are real people or like you know monsters Uh is kind of like up in the air for the whole for the whole movie Hmm. um i'm trying to think of one that maybe you've seen oh here's one here's one uh the babadook yep (laughs) i love that movie yeah it's one of my favorites it's one of the few movies i have on my movie that i've kept on my movie shelf oh really yeah nice yeah i've only seen it once but i remember really liking it Mm -hmm. and uh it has that has that good thing with um you know clearly it was the monster was something else you know i Uh love it when yeah horror is used as a vehicle to express some sort of other thing that's going on Definitely. Um, Near Dark. We talked about that on the mm-hmm. pod last year. That's a vampire movie. Yeah. Uh, Catherine Bigelow. Yep. It was, yeah, I really like that movie. <laughs> um, Bird Box. Did you see that one? No. Is that, that's the, um, 
uh oh god what's her name the blindfold Sa- one sandra sandra, sandra bullock, bullock yeah I kept thinking susan sarandon but yeah i did not see that yeah. movie i heard only bad things but, it wasn't terrible yeah. it was just kind of like i think it i think it got hurt because it was so similar to a quiet place okay and it was not as good as a quiet place. Hmm. so um yeah what about the love witch have you heard of that one no that one's like 1960s style um hmm. it's about a witch who makes potions and you know seduces men but it's hmm it's very uh old school you know it's a it's like a retro type movie uh-huh and, was it did know, it always... was that when it was made or is that when it takes place or no that's it what came it out looks in 2016 like? okay that's when it takes place though so it's like it it looks like it came out in the 60s mm-hmm. nice so, but it's it's pretty cool it's a pretty creative movie the trailer especially is like really fun you know you see it and you're like it's got like that music and like the psychedelic kind of vibe, you know, uh-huh. that, that, that whole thing. Nice. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, there's, Oh man, I forgot one of my favorite ones. Uh, the voices. Oh no, have I haven't heard of it. I have not never heard of it. Oh man, dude, the voices, it's a horror comedy. It's uh, directed by Marjane Satrapi. Okay. Um, who, who wrote, um, Persepolis. Did you ever read that graphic novel? No, I saw the movie. I really liked the movie. Yes. She directed the movie too. Oh, so, cool. Um, yeah. So she, she like co-directed the movie. The voices mm-hmm. is a, like she just did that by herself, but mm-hmm. it stars Ryan Reynolds and it's like, he has a cat and the dog and they talk to him and they tell him to kill. People. Oh, and it, it's, that sounds it's, awesome. You know, not the most creative <laughs> premise necessarily, uh-huh. but it's completely sold by Ryan Reynolds. So yeah. He just completely makes it work. And he does the voices for the cat and dog too. Oh. And, you know, the dog <laughs> is going like, Oh, you're a good boy. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> you kill people. You didn't mean to. And the cat is like, kill the bitch. You slice her throat like you were supposed to, you know, just like being super. Uh huh. So yeah. I, I, I love the voices. All right. So when did that come out? uh 2014 or okay. so a few, few years back but um yeah so i mean those are just some of my favorite uh horror movies directed by women um there's a bunch um that you know uh, on this list uh the list has like 250 i've mm-hmm. seen 25 or something so mm-hmm. you know there's a bunch Tenth uh, of the way there yeah, I I actually found like five vampire movies that were directed by women that I'm gonna try to watch sometime during this year as nice. part of my uh, 52 challenge. Mm-hmm. But um, anyway, I feel like we should just jump right into Saint Maud. Yeah, let's point. do it. Uh, okay, so Saint Maud was directed by Rose Glass. I think this was her first feature film. Um, it stars. Mordiff Clark and Jennifer Hewell. Um, um, Nick, this this is so embarrassing. You actually mispronounced it. It's um, it's actually pronounced Meryl Streep. Oh shoot! Oh, that's no, so embarrassing. It's not. Meryl Streep is not in this. It's <laughs> actually pronounced Meryl Streep via 1980s. <laughs> Sorry, um, I think she because... looks exactly like Meryl Streep. I can't. Oh yeah. I can't get over it. The Anyways. the lead actress in yeah. this movie? Uh, Jennifer Jennifer Eel. Oh yeah, okay. Name? So yeah, Jennifer Eel. I think she looks exactly two... like Meryl Streep from the from the nineteen eighties. For sure, like the Kramer versus Kramer uh, yeah. Meryl Streep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I can see that. I didn't I didn't make that connection immediately. That's uh, why I had a weird awkward pause there. Yeah. <laughs> but I, 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 Sorry, I see what I, you're I de- saying. I derailed the whole it. thing. <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> um, I just I, I just didn't realize. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, she was really good. So I mean, real quick, the plot description uh the, the plot follows a pious nurse who becomes dangerously obsessed with saving the soul of her dying patient. So basically, you know, there basically there's two people starring in this movie. There's um, the young woman, this Danish actress, who I butchered her name, her first name, Mordif, Mordif Clark. 
and uh, then the yeah, her no, patient Danish. is Jennifer Yule, and that's the one who looks just like Meryl Streep. Mm-hmm. And uh, the main character, though, is very creepy. You know, she is one of those actresses you put in a horror movie, and she's got like that blank face, mm-hmm. and you're just like, yeah, there's something off with you. You just are giving me weird vibes right from the get go. Mm-hmm. Um, I do want to say this movie is available on Epics. That's where you can watch this movie. Mm-hmm. So I don't know about you, Sean, but I actually subscribed to Net to Epics for I like remember a what three I month did. trial or something. I think um, I'm paying like two dollars a month for a for a three month trial or something. Yeah. So uh, something like that. I watched it on. Is, I think I I must have gotten it just from uh, Amazon or something. I don't think I did because I I wanted to watch it on my TV, but. Um, my PlayStation, I don't think had epics or no, no, I'm sorry. I actually subscribed to epics through, uh, app or through Amazon. That's what I did. And it was, oh, yeah, so it was got, super like, quick and easy. So. Things, yeah. Of. Yeah. I think, yeah. So I, I think I got a three month trial. So if you want to subscribe to Epic, it's free and, uh, you can just do it through Amazon. Okay. Yeah. So you didn't actually end up paying anything extra. No. For it. <clears throat> That's interesting. Yeah, because I, I think I'm paying two dollars a month or something for Epics okay. for three months. But, oh, um, maybe maybe that's what it was. I don't. I guess I don't remember. I thought it was either way. It's the like same. Either way, it's like deal. a funny thing because like yeah. we're deep into the streaming wars right now. Yeah, where you know you got Netflix and HBO Max like battling for each other, mm-hmm. and then there's like Epics that's like, hey, we have the new <laughs> A24 movie over here. Uh, you guys want to download it? So. Uh-huh. Uh, you can watch it and i'm just like scrolling through me like I, I guess there's some other movies on here that i'll uh-huh. watch but i don't know sean i'm in a weird place with uh the streaming wars you know i'm, uh-huh. I'm like on the verge of uh canceling hbo max just so i can watch tubi tv oh yeah you ever watch tubi you get down tubi uh-uh man i've never it's, been on the tubi it's crazy we'll yeah. talk about it later we don't need to get into it <laughs> yeah. right now. but um anyway so this movie, Saint Maud. Um, sorry, I keep going all over the place with this. It it I'm was pretty helping. good. I I enjoyed it. Um, I didn't love it, but I thought it was pretty good. I feel like Rose Glass clearly has an eye for horror, and I'm pretty eager to see what she does for the rest of her career. I hope that, like like I said earlier, this movie was delayed like two years. I hope that that doesn't affect her at all. You know, mm. sometimes. Yeah, you know, unfortunately, there's like this thing that happens in Hollywood where like women don't always get the second chance. You know, they don't get to like if their first movie bombs, then often they don't get to make a ne- a next one. So mm-hmm. I'm really I'm rooting for her because I thought that there was a lost style in this movie. I thought that she did well with tension, and I thought that the parts that were horror based were really good. Mm-hmm. Um, my pro my i don't know if this is a problem with the movie but it definitely wasn't as much of a horror as i was expecting it was much more psychological yeah um maybe it's just because i didn't know too much going into this movie but i was kind of expecting more more stuff with the devil and god you know and um ultimately the movie does have devil and god influence in it basically like the main character is like is touched by god and it almost becomes like a sexual thing between mm-hmm. her and God and kind of makes you think, I don't know if it made you think of it, but it made me think like, is that really God or is that like the devil pretending that it's God? Yeah. And then it you know, kind of s- spirals into a more of a psychological sort of uh, experiment, I think. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, you know, I, I think I could have done more, more horror with this one. Um but we we can we you know i feel like i want to hash it out with you a bit like yeah. I, I definitely want to have a spoiler section so before yeah. we get into spoilers like what were what were your initial thoughts um yeah i think i i had a very similar reaction to it um it, it had a really it had really great tone i thought it was really well paced um for you know kind of a slow building horror film um it had a great look i loved the lighting um, and, uh, yeah, the, the kind of desaturation of it and it, it just really had a, a cool look to it. Um, and there were some really, there's some really striking visual, 
uh, stuff in the movie. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you just like even look at some of the images from the movie. There's just like some really prominent visually striking things that <clears throat> that they did with the movie uh, in the movie. Um, but yeah, uh, I guess I in the end, I'm I'm not really sure. I would recommend it to anyone like I would overtly recommend it to anyone. Um, it was 90 minutes. And so uh, I can't say it was, it was a waste of time. I think it, it really filled that 90 minutes well. Um, but I don't, yeah, I guess I don't know who I would recommend it to or um, aside from maybe just, just a, a, someone who's really into horror movies. Um, yeah, I guess yeah. like, what do you mean? Like, like, because like, because it, yeah. Like, what do you mean? Why wouldn't you recommend it to someone? It just, I get, I guess, uh, it, we kind of have to get into spoilers a little bit. Um, it's, I don't know what the movie was about. Um, and if you really even try to explain what the movie was about, it sounds pretty silly and not really about anything. It sounds a little ridiculous, but I think the movie kind of worked. Um, I guess, uh, really, I'm a, I'm a little back and forth on this movie. Um, I don't... Uh, y- yeah, I was a little meh on it, I guess, is is the thing. Okay. There's some th- definitely some things I liked about it. Nothing I didn't like about it. It's just I don't, I don't know really how to feel about it. Maybe, and, you know, I, I kind of want to talk to you about what you thought in more detail, but... Yeah, um, I mean, it's it's one of these movies where, like, I don't know, like, the ending kind of, like, messes with you a little bit, you uh-huh. know, like, the ending kind of, like, I don't want to say pulls the rug out, but, like, the ending is, like, kind of, like, grabs you and is, like, okay, so do you like this movie or not, yeah. you know, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I think because of the ending, I'm, like, not as into it as I could have been mm-hmm. if I had, had, like, the ending more or something, but... Yeah, yeah I, I think and like I think I, you're right. I think we do need to yeah. this out. I guess uh, about the ending, I I actually the ending is is that was at least something that was striking and like kind of pulls you in. Like the, there's like a last little chunk of the movie that's just like whoa, and um, kind of takes takes a quick turn and then like the movie's over. And I thought that was pretty cool. So, and I really do appreciate a good ninety minute movie. Um, and like I, I was saying that I don't know what the movie was really about or I can't really put my finger on what the movie was doing. But it, I think if you make a 90 minute movie, you don't really have to have necessarily a complete full idea and not everything has to come together super neatly. Um, and yeah, it just it really didn't feel like a waste of time. I just I'm not sure who I would who I rec- would recommend the movie to and and I don't know who it would really work for is is the thing. Um but yeah, I ha- I do have a lot of g- uh, of good thoughts about the movie, or, you know. It it worked for me in many ways. It just didn't really come together. Totally. I'm with you though too. Like the I think it was less than 90 minutes. I think it was more like 86 minutes. Yeah. And that that to me is, you know, yeah let's get in let's get out yeah and you know it's funny because you're mentioning it being like a slow burn slow burn of 86 minutes yeah it's like yeah it's kind of yeah, weird you don't need to have too much of anything it, just, it was like just a slow the- burn but it was also well paced and yeah. it was kind of quick and and it was like took you on this ride and um but yeah then yeah if you i think if you step back and really think about what the movie was um is one where you run into problems but <clears throat> Yeah, I don't know. Maybe we should get into spoilers because I, I do. I want to see what you. Have yeah. To say. So let's get into spoilers. Um, at this point on, we're doing spoilers, spoiler section. So if you don't want this movie to be spoiled, um, turn it off. Go watch this eighty-six minute movie and uh, come back and finish it. So, um, so Sean. Yeah. Um. Was she touched by God? Was was that sexual? Okay, so like basically the the thing with the movie, you know, and, and first true horror moment, she's like in the kitchen, like washing a dish or something, and then she can like she like feels like 
a presence on her and mm-hmm. you don't know if it's like paranormal a ghost or whatever but it like grabs her and like she like lets out like a moan kind of right mm-hmm. and it's like a pretty striking visual i think yeah. that's what you were alluding to earlier yeah yeah that this movie does have some really cool visuals and i mean i really liked this part it was like you know, her neck like stuck out and she was like oh and it was like a whole thing like her body like really opened up uh-huh. and it was yeah. very cool visual and um quite do you think that was supposed to be a sexual thing i absolutely do uh i think there yeah um i don't know that's kind of the thing about the movie. Uh, I don't know. Um, I definitely, while I was watching, I was, I, I took it as kind of a sexual thing and I, I don't know how you could um, make that or do that scene uh, and have the actor do those things and not think some people are going to take this as a sexual thing or, or, or most people are going to take this as kind of a sexual thing. So I can't imagine that sh- she wasn't aware that that was, um, you know, it, that was going to be at play in the movie. Absolutely. But Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I, there were a few other sexual things that happened in the movie as well. I mean, yeah. um, there was, uh, there's the scene where her, where the two women, you know, the nurse and the patient felt the presence together. Mm-hmm. And that came after the patient was having like a sexual experience with, uh, with her friend, like yeah. her friend left. And then the nurse came in, they sat together and they like, felt the spirit together uh-huh. and it was like you know, they were like holding hands yeah so that was that certainly made it seem like it was sexual and then uh later on too um the main character was like kind of just she went out and was like having sex with people yeah random people at bars and she was like having sex with this guy and she like had like a like a traumatic reaction you know mm-hmm. and she like jumped off of him and uh she like you know, curled up into a ball. She got all freaked out. Mm-hmm. And, uh, to me that screamed trauma, you know, it was like, she clearly has had either the movie was trying to, you know, relate to that image to trauma, mm-hmm. like rape of some kind, or it was, or, you know, explicitly she was like having a vision of, um, you know, whatever was happening in the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of yeah. There's a lot of stuff, uh, kind of subtext in there. Um, I, I'm not. <laughs> I, I don't know if you're asking me what I thought. I I don't know. Like I don't. I don't know what the movie was going for. I don't know if maybe there's a longer version of this movie where they dive deeper into kind of her past because that's a that's a big question mark too. I don't know. I don't know what the main character's deal was. Or I don't know what mod mods deal was um what do you do you know (laughs) what happened do you have an idea of what what happened to her and like because you you see that the movie opens i believe if i'm remembering correctly she's covered in blood and there's a in in like a hospital or some type of mental or or a, a, a medical institution or something and there's a dead patient or something. Am I remember that correctly? Yeah. Where yeah, that's what the flashback was yeah. when she was brought, when she was yeah. like having sex with that. Yeah, guy. that's right. Because she was like giving CPR or uh, right. whatever. So, and then she like breaks through his chest. I don't know what the deal. I don't know what, the, I don't know what her past was. I don't know what that was about. Yeah. I mean, the, they don't tell you. Yeah. So either, Again, I feel like I feel like I mean, I, Sean, I don't think you're wrong. I think this movie doesn't give you any firm answers. Mm-hmm. You know, they they do the thing where they they open doors and kind of let you come to your own conclusions. Yeah. So something happened in her past um, where maybe she killed somebody. Mm-hmm. Maybe they died on accident, but she's still dealing with that trauma. Yeah. And so now she's with a new patient and she's like falling in love with the patient, but she's clearly lost. Maybe she's not even falling in love. She's just like becoming invested in this person. Mm -hmm. And then she takes it upon herself to um, save them. She decides that she's going to, um, she feels like she has a calling from God Uh and she is going to save this person. And at some point, I think you're supposed to, uh, 
put together that at some point between those two events of her someone dying that either she killed someone or someone died and then she found god afterwards right she she became religious after that traumatic experience whatever it was and whatever happened so she like she wasn't raised religious necessarily she wasn't raised with this like uh attitude towards religion and god that was my understanding and i don't i guess i'm not even sure was she raised religious at all or um yeah what it, and, and i don't i'm not i'm just not sure how any of that really is connecting <laughs> Yeah, I didn't really give too much. Honestly, I didn't give too much thought to when she discovered God or when uh -huh. she became religious. But, because her um, friend, the that knew her from before, she didn't seem like she. She seemed like she came from a, a party, his a very you know, party like a history. normal background. Yeah. yeah, because her friend shows up and is just like, "Hey, I haven't seen you for a while. Yeah. What's going on?" Yeah, and she's oh, like. You cut out all this religious imagery and put on your wall interesting yeah. and it seemed like she yeah. had a, she had a very she would party with that this person right like yeah they had and, like a, know, a was, friendly yeah but more like she she may have had like when she went out to the bar and got really drunk and then had sex with all those people that may have been her reverting to a that a past maybe similar to that uh, of alcohol, sex, and debauchery, or you know, I don't know. Did you not? Did you not pick up on that? Maybe I. No, I now that of... you're saying that, like I remember that that whole thing, and um, yeah, I mean, I do think that the movie was trying to say something about um, like like, I don't know if it was a. I don't know if it was a huge statement. I don't think the movie was about this in the same way Promising Young Women was, or other those types mm -hmm. of movies or but, even Baba Duke um, or yeah but the movie later. definitely you know showed the guy after she had sex with the guy and then she jumped off of him he was like it's okay he like comforted her for a second then was mm -hmm. like but I'm gonna finish and he yeah. like finished having sex with her. yeah and it was like like that's rape you know but yeah. like the movie yeah. just kind of like let it sit there and it it almost like didn't have a point it like mm -hmm. it didn't have um like the point was that it happened and these things happen, but I felt like I thought that was actually pretty interesting because it wasn't um, like, I felt like that was something a female director would do like have that scene in there, but not make it like a plot point, you know? Yeah. Like it was just like, it was texture to, yeah. um, to the movie and not like a catalyst for a bigger event happening, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. But either way, um um one yeah. one thing I did want to mention is you said that there that there's not really it's it's less of a horror movie it's not very scary but there is some really um uh, kind of cringy imagery in it like um you know when she the the scene where she puts the uh the nails through the card and then puts the card in her in her shoes and then steps oh, right. on it. Like there's some right. really, um, she did do that. She yeah. Even though that. there's not like a bunch of scary stuff going on, there's some really like uncomfortable, uh, uh type of almost body. There's horror. some elements of body yeah. horror here. Yeah. For sure. I mean, the, the shoes thing is something I've never seen before. And it was mm -hmm. like, why is she doing that? Yeah. <laughs> Please don't. Yeah. And then I think before that she was like picking at her skin in yeah. a really disgusting way. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, you know, I like body horror quite a bit. Yeah. Um, but again, like I just, I don't know. I, I wasn't expecting it. And I think that kind of threw me off a little mm -hmm. bit. Like I, I, I think one of my problems with this movie was that I didn't truly know what it was. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, like the movie wants you to come to your own conclusions, but also kind of felt like the movie uh, didn't know what kind of movie it wanted to be. Yeah. You know? Yeah, because totally. I felt a lot of it was psychological. There was the religious aspect of it, which like kind of becomes paranormal. And then there was like the body horror type stuff. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I just didn't think they all meshed. Like I I don't know. I didn't I didn't love the body yeah. horror in this movie. It wasn't mm -hmm. really jive. Yeah. The, 
I, I will say, like, I mean, that ending scene where it does, the, like, kind of the one actual horror scene of the movie where she, she, like, um, Jennifer or Meryl Streep, I, for, I forget her name, <laughs> uh, Jennifer Eel, like, she comes out and she says, I'm, I'm the devil and, and you're so weak or whatever. Like, that, I, that totally threw me off guard. I, that was so scary. Uh, just for a really quick moment. And I, I think the movie did a really good job of like building up in tone to that moment and, uh, and to really throw catch or it really caught me by surprise and scared the shit out of me. Um, and so, yeah, I thought that was really effective scene. (laughs) Yeah. I, I, I loved what they did there. I loved the build up. So just to give a listener, you know, that that was when she she got fired from her job for being mm-hmm. a creep and yeah. trying to be manipulative as a nurse. You know, uh-huh. she so she got let go of being that woman's nurse, but then she still saw herself as the savior and she snuck back in to save her, I guess. Yeah. And this as she's woman, dying. Yeah, she's like on her deathbed. She's mm-hmm. like dying and she's like she just tries praying with her. She tries, you know, putting water on her forehead and stuff. And the woman pushes her away. And then, yeah, basically, like, turns into the devil for a second. And mm-hmm. her face becomes huge. Yeah. Like, exaggerated. And her eyes bulge. And she's, like, screaming at her. Yeah. Because she, she, like, she said. The room. She kind of made her think, like, question her whole religious beliefs because she said yeah. all of it was fake i i didn't believe any of it and you know yeah um i i thought that was awesome i thought yeah. i agree i thought that movie i thought that scene was amazing until like the scene was kind of over uh-huh. and i i like her i like repeated what she said in my head you know and uh-huh. it was like everything she said was like what a real person would say, not what the devil would say. Yeah. And at that moment I was like, okay, so that wasn't really the devil. She's like suffering from mental illness, you know? And I thought right there, the movie was like, she's, she's doing, uh, you know, she's, uh, the movie's more about mental illness than anything else. Uh And, um, I thought that was when the movie kind of, decided that and yeah maybe not maybe i'm like maybe that was me coming to that decision but then you know it goes into the end of the movie where she she ends up burning herself alive on the beach Mm -hmm. and there's like a transcendent moment of her like riding a horse into the kingdom of heaven as saint maude and like all the people on the beach who are looking at her burning alive like get that i think they get down on their knees and like kind of bow to her as as if she's a holy figure you know uh, rising to heaven and then there's the split and second. that cuts really quick and shows her that she's actually burning yeah and then the movie. yeah and it's like again it's like like you know the movies the whole movie you're like is she really being t-? like this is my problem with it because like i got invested in that question mm-hmm. you know is she being touched by god or is this like the devil that's like manipulating her you know mm-hmm. and i was like so into that scene where like the lady turned into the devil and it was like like i want i want more of that i want mm-hmm. to grapple with that sort of like explanation that like that fight yeah and then i felt like the movie then was like no actually she's just like she's just fucked up and yeah and, uh, but I, no. I don't. No. I was kind of grappling with that as well. You know, uh, the obvious question is: Is there like mental illness? Is she, is she just because there's some scenes where she's obviously, you know, there's some kind of paranormal, um, spiritual thing going. Like she's actually, you see her lift, you know, floating in midair. Um, and there's a few other scenes where, and even just the scene where she's being. I guess touched by God is kind of overtly um I guess as the audience you're supposed to kind of um see that as her perspective and 
and you are like kind of experiencing the story through her perspective. And I think you are supposed to, uh, as the audience, believe that that is happening to her as she believes that that's happening to her. And um, yeah, I thought that was super interesting. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I... I, I think the the obvious question is is that mental illness though is it like a, an unreliable narrator experiencing mental illness and I don't think that the movie did anything interesting with if it was mental illness which kind of the ending I I do agree the ending kind of I don't know if I would say it as definitely as as you just did but the ending definitely kind of uh kind of goes in that direction of it was there it was probably mental illness or something but I don't think it does anything with men mental illness I don't know if has anything to say right. about and mental illness or yeah. if it's like if it, if it has any kind of interesting perspective on mental illness or if it showed mental illness in any kind of realistic or interesting way and or like trauma you know yeah. it's like make it, maybe the mental illness is connected to the trauma but i don't yeah. know if the movie was actually saying anything yeah like about either of those things yeah you know and like you know i don't mean to be like definitely 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 it's about yeah, mental yeah. illness because I agree. I think the movie left the door open. I think it left it up for interpretation, but mm -hmm. you know, but my interpretation was, yeah, this isn't about the devil anymore. You know, this is yeah. about her being tr filled with trauma and uh -huh. being fucked up. And yeah. you know, that's yeah, again, it's my interpretation, but that interpretation left me cold. Mm -hmm. You know, I was, I was yeah. disappointed. I agree. I like it when movies go all out, you know, I mm -hmm. like when movies like really embrace, um, you know, their concept or like, yeah. you know, really go for it. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, uh, even like a movie like Tusk, you know, like they went for it, you know, uh -huh. or um, uh, ready, uh, ready or not. Did you see ready or not? No, I didn't. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm not gonna spoil it for you, right. but like the ending of that movie, you know, they went for it, you uh -huh. know, and I, I, I appreciate those types of things. And I just kind of felt Safety like this one, guaranteed. they were like, Huh? Safety not guaranteed. Yeah, safety not guaranteed. <laughs> Shout out to your yeah. work. Um, I wouldn't call that my work. <laughs> hey, you worked on that yeah, movie. I did. I um, but yeah, you know. So I just I don't know. Like it was like it was like the limitations were there of someone mm -hmm. with their first movie or something. Yeah, you know where and like I mentioned this earlier. I did feel like maybe there's a longer movie that a longer script or maybe they shot a longer movie that was just hacked down to and because almost no one writes a 86 minute movie right that's not <laughs> that's not very common um so yeah i wonder if there was a lot more to this movie at some point that it just kind of got hacked back and uh yeah i don't know that that's kind of how i felt like there was supposed to be more. Did you not? Did you not feel anything? I don't know. I kind of feel like in the horror world, um, it is common for things to be under ninety yeah. minutes. And like just indie horror is just a deep, deep sea of. Uh huh. Of movies. That's true. You know, there's just an endless supply of short but extremely creative mm -hmm. uh, horror movies. Yeah. And uh, you know, so I just feel like the indie side of that type of filmmaking. I don't know what people. You know, I feel like there's probably a lot of short scripts out there for horror movies. But, yeah, you know, that's you know, true. You totally um, could be onto something. Um, you're right. I mean, maybe maybe she has a deeper idea as well. Maybe it, even if it wasn't shot, maybe she like, mm -hmm. you know, has like a longer story in in her head about this. Yeah. But. Yeah, just yeah. left a lot of question marks in my head, and I just i I just don't know how to merge any of those pieces that were that were kind of laid out <clears throat> in the movie so like uh what star rating would you give this ah uh, what a, i don't know if i gave it a star rating yet I, yeah like maybe a three i i might i might give it a three and a half i there's some in, there was a lot of interesting stuff in there and um it mostly worked for me like like I said, I, I enjoyed it. It was well paced. Um, but yeah, three and a half borderline three though. 
Yeah. What, what I, do you think? I, I was leaning three. Like I was yeah. going into this or I was, I was leaning three and a half going into this. Uh, uh-huh. and after talking through it, I'm like, uh, I might go back yeah. and put, give it a three. Yeah. You know, I think just, definitely uh, a- after I got done watching, I was like, yeah, that's a three and a half. And also I'm a little yeah. hesitant about threes. Um, I kind of mostly reserve threes for movies. I really just don't care about. I am just like, I don't have, I mean, this movie, I don't have a whole lot to, to say, but there was, there was some, in, there was some interesting stuff. So. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I hear you. And that's my, my three is usually, yeah, that was a average movie, mm-hmm. like some bad, some good average. Yeah. Whereas yeah. like everything for two and a half to. Yeah. Is Definitely. like uh, that's bad either morally or physically. Uh-huh. That's a bad movie. Bad movie. Yeah. We're like, I don't know. I'm like watching Mortal Kombat right now, and I'm like probably a three just because it's Wait, extremely you're watching average. It right yeah, now, there's a lot of bad, but well, not right now. I oh, watched okay. like I watched like half of it, and then okay. uh, good. I thought I you were watching it right else. now. I'll finish it tonight. Yeah, while we're podcasting, I'm just uh, <laughs> I'm just checking out Mortal Kombat on my phone over here, yeah. HBO Max, right? Mm-hmm. But um yeah but i i think it was interesting though that's kind of where i'm like yeah i don't know maybe three and a heart or something yeah. too or yeah that's i don't true. know because i i do think there could be someone who would get a lot out of this uh-huh but i don't know who that would be <laughs> yeah. necessarily so Me <laughs> kind of with you. i don't know who i would recommend this to yeah so yeah maybe i'll give it so i don't know with that i think we can wrap it up though yeah uh, so yeah, that was Saint Maud. It's available on Epics and uh, probably other places as well. Um, so for next week, um, it's kind of up in the air a little bit. Um, there's talk of me picking Shiva Baby, which is a coming of age story that's supposed to be really good. It's got like 97% of Rotten Tomatoes. But um, there's also a new animated movie on on Netflix by the creators of. Um, Spider-Man in the Spider-Verse, Mitchell versus the Machines, that maybe Derek will pick. So um, we're kind of up in the air on it. Mm. So maybe maybe I'll do Scott Pilgrim versus the World. Who knows? Yeah, because that's gonna be in theaters next week. Yeah. So um, Edgar Wright, yo. Yep. Um, so anyway, uh, with that, um, Sean, uh, it's nice talking to you about Saint yeah. Maud. Yeah, definitely. And um. You know, uh, everyone do your best out there. Take it light and be nice to yourself and others. Can't argue with that. All right. Bye.